I'm Dr. John Gartner. And I'm Dr. Harry Siegel. And welcome to this preview of Shrinking Trump. On our show this week, we break down the gloom and doom that people have been spreading about the polls showing this to be a close race. And John has put together some very powerful other metrics to talk about why he believes, and I agree with him, that the race is not as close as it seems and that Kamala is headed toward a victory. John? Yeah. During this episode, we'll look at nine different metrics uh -huh. that are strongly suggesting that Kamala is going to win this election and maybe even win it big. But the one that we're going to focus on in this preview is the gender gap. Uh, the gender gap, I think, one of the biggest stories here in this Harris lead in our poll, because look at this. Among men, Trump has a sizable lead. He's beating Harris by 12 points among men. Among women, Harris has a much more sizable advantage. Look at this. It's 21 points, 58 to 37 in Harris's favor among women. So you could see how that nets out in her favor, giving her that lead nationally, but also just take this in some perspective here. That would be a gender gap, 21 and 12, of 33 points. Now, we talked in 2020, in 2016, about seeing historically high gender gaps in those presidential elections. This would obliterate those gender gaps. This has been a staple. The gender gap has been since 1980 of American politics. But if we see anything like a 33 point gender gap in November, that's absolutely off the charts, even by modern standards. In the OK, again, off the charts, even by modern standards from Steve Karnacki, who is not prone to uh, excess and, and uh, superlatives. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. He's a data guy. He's a data guy. Yeah, and he's yeah, saying no, this is if this number holds up, this is mind blowing. Okay. And and determinative. Well, yeah. women vote more than men do anyway. I was just gonna mention that. So first of all, we've got twenty one percent of the women uh yeah, women are twenty one percent positive for Kamala. And men are only 12% positive for Trump. So that's a double. That's already, we've already doubled the number. 21 is almost twice as big as 12. And then you add the fact that women vote at higher rates than men. Okay. Then it's, it's really, that could be the election. I, I think that in the end, women will be the, the election. Oh, I think um, so. But, you know, look, um, he's got a chance to win back women, right? He's got a chance. Like, but uh, he's not exactly using it very well. For example, uh, look at this tweet, which you've probably all seen about Taylor Swift, but I think we should still show it. I hate Taylor Swift, all caps, exclamation point. Okay, well, <laughs> 300 million people follow her on Instagram. Uh, you know, it, she's a, a, an icon to uh, young women and, well, really to a whole generation. I, I love her too. Um, she's, even, she's got a, millions and millions of fans. So that's not going to help you win over women to demonize Taylor Swift, right? You think? <laughs> no, uh, but, but again, what we've always said about Trump is that he can't play the long game. Because she endorsed Kamala, right, and and had that link in her website that what generated three hundred thousand people registering to vote, he has to strike back, right. And how exactly. easy would it have been to say, "I'm sad that Taylor's not supporting me, but I love her music," That's right? All he had to say, all, all, all he had to say. And by the way, it was four hundred thousand registrations in the first hour. Oh, um, incredible. And again, that same demographic, you know, younger people, women, people of color. Okay. And, and so it's the same, same landslide of people, you know, rushing into the electorate. Mm -hmm. um, now, so as you know, I've been working with George Conway and his anti psychopack. So George and the psychopath, anti psychopath, have had a huge initiative that they uh, launched this week. They reached out to some of Trump's. Uh, sexual assault victims and had them film commercials, which he is going to be showing um, on the air, but specifically as he is prone to do on Fox News and ESPN and the Golf Channel in Palm Beach, Florida uh, and Bedminster, New Jersey, where Trump and his cronies will be forced to watch it. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's see those commercials. 1979, I had gotten on an airplane. The stewardess said to me, would you like to come up to first class? In the window seat was a gentleman who said that his name was Donald Trump. 
the airplane took off and all of a sudden Donald Trump started groping me. He was trying to kiss me and I'm trying to push him away. He was basically overpowering me. When he started putting his hand up my skirt, I got out of the seat, grabbed my purse and went back to my original seat. And I certainly was shook up by the whole thing. Two years later, at this fundraiser, up comes Trump and his wife. And he looked at me and he said, I remember you. You're that cunt from the airplane. Donald Trump views women as for his entertainment. He is a serial predator. He has said it point blank, and he's done it, and he will continue to do it. Anti-Psychopath Pack Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. Powerful. Wow. That she could quote him like that and that he would remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, when it comes to his malevolence, he actually has a, a, a long memory. Yeah. The denigration. I mean, yeah. you know, one thing that, that people may not know, but there are some clinicians who don't even really think of rape as sexual. They think of it as aggressive, mm -hmm. violent. And often the rapist is not sexually aroused. Um, it, because it's all about it's all about diminishing and violating the person. Yeah. And there he is. And then he calls her that when he sees her at a party in front of his wife. Right. Right. So it's just repulsive and misogynistic at every level. Every level. At every level. And by the way, I forgot to mention, but let me say that we're going to have George Conway on the show again next week to talk about this mm -hmm. campaign and, and to see what results it has. We'll see. Uh, but if it's been like other campaigns that he's done or other people like the Lincoln Project have done, it will probably provoke a reaction. And we're going to talk a little bit later about what Trump's reaction to all oh. of this woman talk has been. But let's see the other ad. My name is Natasha Stoinoff. In 2005, I went to interview Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. At one point, Melania went upstairs to change her clothes for the next photo shoot. And Trump said to me, I want to show you this beautiful painting, this beautiful room. He leads me to this room, pushes me against the wall, and starts kissing me forcefully. I tried to push him. He kept coming back at me. I was in shock and smothered, and he had his hands here against my shoulders. I felt sick inside. I felt horrified. And thank goodness, the butler charges into the room. Like many women, I blamed myself. So Trump turned to me and said, you know we're going to have an affair, don't you? And Melani was approaching. I was horrified. When the Access Hollywood tape came out, and also stories of many other women, including E. Jean Carroll, I realized I was not to blame, that he was just a predator of women. What could have happened if the butler had not come into the room? Donald Trump is an adjudicated sexual assaulter. We cannot elect this man as president. Anti-Psychopath Pack Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. For those of our viewers who are listening to this, what's amazing about this clip, this commercial, is that there are actually photos from the photo shoot on the day <laughs> that he assaulted this reporter. So you see him standing with Melania, who's almost beatifically pregnant, you know, and, and looking very beautiful. And you know that within minutes of those photos that he made this assault on this, on this young yeah. journalist. Yeah. yeah. And that really brings up some of the, the real pure psychopathy of it, right? In other words, it doesn't even make him anxious right? To oh, no. be assaulting a woman a few feet away from his wife. It, it's almost part of the sport of it. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, if, if, if she succumbs, then, you know, he has a sexual experience, but if she doesn't, he gets the joy of humiliating her and making her uncomfortable. Yeah. So he, 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 he can't lose. So look, it's not, it is not lost on Trump that he is losing the election because of women. Hmm. So, I'm going to, sh we're going to show a tape. It's a little bit longer than ones we usually like to show, but this is his argument for why women should vote for Trump. All right. So we have to talk business. I always thought women liked me. I never thought I had a problem. But the fake news keeps saying women don't like me. I don't believe it. I think, I think, you know why they like, they like to have strong borders. They like to have safety. Nothing personal. I think they like me. But I make this statement. Thank you. I love you too. I love you too. Thank you. 
But I think they like me because I represent something that's very important. I make this statement to the great women of our country. Sadly, women are poorer than they were four years ago, much poorer, are less healthy than they were four years ago, are less safe on the streets than they were four years ago, are paying much higher prices for groceries and everything else than they were four years ago, are more stressed and depressed and unhappy than they were four years ago, and are less optimistic and confident in the future than they were four years ago. I believe that. I will fix all of that and fast, and at long last, this nation and national nightmare will end. It will end. We've got to end this national nightmare. Because I am your protector. I want to be your protector. As president, I have to be your protector. I hope you don't make too much of it. I hope the fake news doesn't go, oh, he wants to be their protector. Well, I am. As president, I have to be your protector. I will make you safe at the border, on the sidewalks of your now violent cities, in the suburbs where you are under migrant criminal siege, and with our military protecting you from foreign enemies, of which we have many today because of the incompetent leadership that we have, you will no longer be abandoned, lonely, or scared. You will no longer be in danger. You're not going to be in danger any longer. You will no longer have anxiety from all of the problems our country has today. You will be protected, and I will be your protector. Women. Women will be happy, healthy, confident, and free. You will no longer be thinking about abortion. It's all they talk about, abortion, because we've done something that nobody else could have done. It is now where it always had to be with the states and a vote of the people. So, you know, you, you'll no longer have to think about abortion. So it reminds me of that scene in, um, in uh, Star Wars. These are not the droids you're looking for, you know. <laughs> Don't think about abortion. Don't because you know we haven't even mentioned Roe v. Wade in this discussion about the female vote, and yet that's obviously a huge driver in what's going to make this a disproportionately female electorate. Well, there's a reason why Democrats have put on the ballot in in Montana and Arizona and other places, but but I I think it's important for us to note how patronizing he was. Yeah. He's, it's as if he's talking to, to 50s housewives saying, don't you worry your silly little head about it. Yeah. I'm yeah. here to make you feel happy and safe. Yeah. As if this guy ever, ever made a woman feel loved and respected and safe. <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's really vile and it's, and it's extreme. And, and look at, and, and he was reading some of that off the teleprompter. So that yes. was prepared for him he, the tell is always he always looks this way as he speaks and then he'll turn and improvise and turn back to it so they've even prepared this knowing how poorly he's doing with women actually harry a little uh, trivia that was a truth social post that he wrote himself but he liked it so much even though it's so unhinged that he actually had read it word for word from oh, the teleprompter. Oh, oh, so I didn't show the written version because I thought it was more compelling to show the oral version. Oh my God. Uh, I didn't know that. But I, I like what you're saying about the patronizing. Like, you know, you won't be sad. You won't be depressed. No, you know, no, you'll protect you. Yeah. I'll protect you. I'll be your protector. And it's like, uh, you know, uh, this guy is a, 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 you know, he's, he's been assaulted 28 women that we know of. This is your protector. <laughs> no, but it's also as though he, he hasn't lived in the, in the, in the, in the last 50 years. I mean, it's such a retrograde right. view of women. I mean, he's talking to them like they're babies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so offensive. Um, Good point. It is. No, I think that's really, and, and maybe those are the women that he thinks he can speak to. 
you know, the, the women who come from that tradition, but that's a very small portion of women. Other women are going to be, as you say, totally uh, offended by that patronizing. This is how, also how probably how he seduces women who are, who are vulnerable in his orbit. He mm. becomes big and protective and don't worry. I'll make sure everything's okay. You'll never be unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. Monster. Yeah. No, no he, he, he is a monster. Now let's contrast that with some of Kamala's statements. And you tell me if you're a woman who you think is going to protect you. In state after state, including yours, these abortion bans have been passed that criminalize health care providers. In a couple of states, prison for life, Oprah. Prison for life in a couple of states for a doctor or a nurse who provides health care. And so it, it, it seems very apparent even that- when the, Even when the mother's life is in danger. But see, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. So is she on death's door before you actually decide to give her help? Mm-hmm. That's the problem. Is that That's what we're problem. saying? Yeah. That you've got to that, prove you're on death's like door. Like literally a doctor or a nurse has to say, she might die any minute, better give her now care. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise I might go to prison for life in some cases. But there's someone who's talking about protecting women. Right. From, from the, the great solution that Trump came up with to throw abortions back to the states. No, no, no. Women aren't thinking wanted. about that anymore. They're not thinking about that anymore. Do not think about abortion <laughs> anymore. That's right. They don't need to. They're not anxious. They're so happy. <laughs> Trump is, and, is and they're not is depressed magical. anymore either. They're not depressed. They were depressed. No, no he, it's all, it's talk about snake oil salesmen. Unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. I'll solve everything, even anxiety. <laughs> We're out of business, John. Anxiety, <laughs> depression. <laughs> really, exactly. We're out of business, right? Exactly. Um, and here's another um, place where she's, you know, defending women. One in three women in America lives in a state with a Trump abortion ban. This includes Georgia and every state in the South except Virginia. Think about that when you also combine that with what we know has been longstanding neglect around an issue like maternal mortality. Think about that when you compound that with what has been longstanding neglect of women in communities with a lack of the adequate resources they need for health care, prenatal, during their pregnancy, postpartum. Think about that. And these hypocrites <laughs> want to start talking about this is in the best interest of women and children. Well, where you been? Where you been when it comes to taking care of the women and children of America? Where you been? Now that's a protector. Wow. It, it just gives me chills, you know, yeah. when, she, when she raises her voice like that. It's just so powerful. I know. Wow. She's great. What a pleasure. So that's our preview of this week's show. Please come and see the whole thing. Our show is called Shrinking Trump. You can search for us in any search engine, but we're broadcast on the Really American Network on YouTube. The show drops on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. You can watch it then or any time afterwards. We hope to see you there. See you there. Bye.